Welcome to Elite Athletes TV, quarterback training. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro, and today I'm going to put you inside the helmet of a first-round pick. I'm going to let you see what he sees and think about what he's thinking about, understand the reads, and figure out the play concept. And that's coming up right now. Ready? Welcome back. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Mike Pulaski. I played 11 years of professional football. I played in the NFL, the Canadian League, the Arena League, and the XFL. And I played college ball in the Pac-10. I was a Pac-10 offensive MVP in my senior year as a quarterback. And so I have full knowledge of a position. I've seen every offense there is to see. Uh, I played in the West Coast. I played in a lot of the uh, spread stuff, obviously the Arena League stuff, the CFL. And so I got a lot of quarterback knowledge and a lot of route knowledge. But I want to bring to you today a look at a first-round pick, see what he's seeing, and see how it helped him become such a great quarterback. This is Justin Herbert, University of Oregon. And a huge part of the quarterback success up at Oregon over the last several years has been how effective they are at running the football. With a running game, it is the quarterback's best friend. If you can run the football, it's going to open up passing lanes for you all the time. So Oregon uses play action pass and run action pass. And that's a later video. We'll talk about the difference between those two all the time. And by doing that, they get some guys wide open in their routes. Now I'm going to be breaking down offenses, breaking down plays, telling you about quarterback concepts, what life was like in all the different leagues uh, and giving you an insight from that quarterback position. So if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell so that you get notified when stuff comes out. You can give us a thumbs up. And I want all young quarterbacks, parents, coaches out there, anybody, feel free to comment on what I'm doing here. Ask a question, and I'll try to get back to you. So right now we're going to look at a play-action pass, Oregon versus Cal. This is a scissors route concept, and I'm going to break it down for you and show you how you can read it. Let's go to the film. So this is Cal versus Oregon, and this is the 2018 season. And we're looking at Justin Herbert at quarterback for the Ducks, Cal's defense was a really good defense in this season. And so right now, Oregon has what's called 12 personnel in the game. One running back, two tight ends. One, two equals 12 personnel. We talk about the running backs first and then tight ends next to give you your personnel. 22 would be two running backs, two tight ends. Obviously, 11 would be one and one. So speaks for itself. Oregon is a very run-heavy team, very good running the football, and they have a very good offensive line when it comes to running the game. And so play-action pass is a very good tool for the Ducks. They also have a fantastic quarterback in Justin Herbert. So what you're going to see here as we line this thing up, I'll move it forward just a little bit, give you a look what Herbert sees. Corners are lined up staring intently at their receivers a little bit of inside leverage up top kind of a heads up look here split the receiver down the middle your safety is staring at the tight end so he's clearly locked man uh, and linebackers are staring into the backfield you have a single high safety in the middle for cal he is what they call a post safety and so in today's terminology of football what that means is the middle of the field is closed if you hear a coach asking you, was the middle of the field open or closed? This is a closed middle of the field. It's man coverage. So bears are a man here, man here, locked up man here, locked up man here, and linebackers are waiting to see which way this back releases. But the free safety is the only zone player back there, but he's closing off the middle of the field. Now let's take a look at the route. So we've got it all dialed in, Oregon and their 12 personnel, Cal playing man defense. Now let's drop that route and see what we're about to look at on film. Oregon's going to run play action pass here, and you're going to see Herbert come out and give a solid fake to the tailback, running inside zone. On the outside, wide receiver, he's got that press coverage. He's going to release and run a post. Tight end on the inside is going to release and run a corner. Now these two routes are made to work off of each other. Uh, they're designed to create space and create a stretch on a defender that's in somewhere either in zone or man. In this case, 
Cal's playing man, so it's going to create a stretch in that man coverage. Backside route is going to release and run a deep over, and we'll talk about his part in all of this later. Herbert has to come out, give a good fake, and give a good drop, and then go through his read concept. And we'll talk about that read concept when we look at the film here. But this is the overall route. Again, scissors up top, back blocking. Once he blocks, he releases if there's no threat. So scissors up top, post with a corner coming underneath it, backside, deep over, dover, dig, whatever people want to call it. But so this is the scissors concept on the front side right here. Post with the corner underneath. And it gives you a vertical stretch when you run it. I can tell you right now that Oregon's offensive coordinator is extremely happy about his call against man. What he has is in that man lineup, post routes, corner routes, those are great man routes because it's a single play, single player trying to beat a defensive player. Knowing that he has a really athletic tight end in his set, he's got him matched up with an outside linebacker. That's a mismatch for offense anytime. Now, you can still run that scissors concept. It's good versus several coverages. And Oregon absolutely loves running that scissors, some kind of three-level flood to the boundary. They do it all the time. And they do most of it off of their play-action pass or run-action pass. But they love the scissors concept. They love throwing those corners. Herbert's really good at it. So let's take a look at what he does on film versus this man coverage for Cal. What's going to happen here is the outside receiver is going to run a post. The tight end is going to run a corner. And so they cross, and they call that a scissors concept. The design of a play is so that you have to decide on defense who you're going to take. As your receiver gets out, he's normally the more fleet of foot runner. He will get down the field quicker. So here the Bears are a man. This corner is going to take him man to man the whole way. As he gets vertical now and pushes the middle of the field, this safety has to make a decision of whether he's going to take that post or whether he's going to take the corner coming out by the tight end. He also still has to honor this backside route, so he can't really come off the middle of the field. Let's take a look at it once in real time. You can see Herbert absolutely delivers a strike. Now, here's the stretch. Tight end getting vertical, receiver getting vertical, and then when the receiver runs the post, he's going to run right at this safety. And so if the safety weren't there and the receiver gets a good cut across the middle, Herbert would have that for a choice. But because they have a post safety and the middle of the field is closed, now his second read is going to be this tight end coming out. Here's where the matchup works for Oregon. Because you have a tight end versus an outside linebacker, these guys are usually pretty good dropping into zone. They're good on the pass rush. They're very athletic. But in man-to-man -man coverage against a fleet-footed tight end, which is what Oregon has here, it's not a great matchup for Cal. And so when he gets matched up on this tight end, Herbert knows he, if it all breaks right, he's going to go to this tight end. Watch the tight end and his eyes as he gets vertical here, this is a smart player, knowing his assignment. He gets vertical down the field, and right here, he starts looking for that receiver. Go forward a little more. Boom, right there. You see the head switch over? He's looking for this receiver. Receiver on this scissors concept, running the post, got a nice release. And so if there weren't a safety in the middle, that would be a touchdown. But because there's a safety in the middle, receiver's job now is to go and push through that safety. And what he's going to do is make him bubble over the top or come underneath. It's really a type of pick or what they call a rub because picks are illegal. But it's a way of forcing that safety to go over and around so that he can't get in on this play. What that does is leaves the outside linebacker man-to-man, one-on-one with that tight end. And that's a mismatch that any offense likes to take advantage of. So I'll go slow-mo right here. Watch the tight end take the perfect angle to work off this corner right there. Now watch this corner. He's forcing that safety to get depth. As a result, now it's one-on-one -on -one right here. And Herbert 
throws an absolute strike. I mean, right in the hip pocket, just past the outside linebacker. You couldn't throw that any better. All right, so we see the play. We see the scissors. Obviously, we know he completed the pass. But what was the offensive coordinator thinking about when he called this play? Well, Cal, when you get down near the red zone, tends to send pressure. I talked about Oregon being a very good run-oriented team. And so by putting 12 personnel in the game, what they do is they lock Cal into a heavy defensive set, meaning they're going to have all their linebackers in the game. Rather than going with dime package or nickel package down there, they get them into a run, a base run defense. And so when you get them into a base run defense, you're going to be able to find mismatches if you have athletic tight ends. In this case, Cal runs that man. So much in college football today has gone to man routes. And a huge part of that is because of the RPO game. Here, Cal has a really good defense. They have great corners on the outside. They have Cam Bynum and Elijah Hicks, both very good players. And they can cover man. Ashton Davis as a safety is going to be an NFL guy coming up here. And Jalen Hawkins will probably play in the NFL too. So their whole secondary is really good. But Cal feels like they can match up man in man against that heavy offensive set with the two tight ends, they can get the extra player into the box. And so if you got three guys in coverage, two men on the outside, and you add a safety to the box, now you've really got eight guys stacked inside the box. And so it's a run-heavy defense to stop that run for Oregon. They were looking for the run from Oregon. And so that's why Oregon locked it in with that 12 personnel. It puts the defense into a personnel set where they can get a matchup. So as an offensive coordinator, that's what has to go into your thinking. How do I get them into a position, into a set where I have an advantage on offense? So they did that by going with 12 personnel and getting that run-heavy defense. So you ask, okay, Cal's playing man. What if you come out as an offense coordinator, you make that play call, and you get a different coverage? Well, let's take a look on the computer, and we'll talk about that right now. So let's say instead of cover one here, you're going to end up with cover three. These corners... We'll drop back and take deep thirds now. And you'll have deep thirds in the middle. Okay, as a quarterback, now what are you going to read? This outside linebacker, he's a near side guy, so he's going to have to be a drop guy. They would actually overshift this to try to correct that up front, but we're not going to worry about fronts right now. And the strong safety would be a flat defender on this side. So as a quarterback, what you're going to read again, you're going to have the post here, middle's closed, this receiver's job is going to be to attract the attention of this corner, push him deep, attract his attention, and try to bait him into the middle. As a tight end, you're going to get your release, come off, and hit your corner route, and you'll probably come off a little bit flatter if you have a zone defender sitting on the outside. Now, Oregon does a great job running these corners and influencing corners, uh, and I'll show you another set of film later on versus Auburn. It's, it's awesome. But... If this corner gets depth and stays high, he has to stay as deep as the deepest man in his zone. So if this post pushes and gets a good push on him, he's going to stay high. If you bring that corner underneath, then you still may have space out in that flat. So let's back some of this down here a little bit. Okay. So we know that we've got corner in his deep third. We've got the post. Let's say the corner stays home this time. Still got that corner coming here, but now he's running into the post. He's running into that corner. Some teams make an adjustment where quarterback can throw this ball into that seam. There's a lane right in here coming off the back of the tight end if that corner stays home where you can stab that ball in there about 22 yards downfield. That's one throw. Herbert definitely has the tools to do that. But they also, on this play, because of the play action, have a back releasing out to the flat. Now, if this outside linebacker stays home and your corner plays this right, stays home for this corner, safety's in the middle, you still have your backside route, and you'll see that on film, as an outlet. Because you're going to get depth here, linebackers are going to read run and react early Herbert would come backside and look for a backside on the dig if all else fails. And so you play that front side concept flat. You do a high low with your flat defender and the corner uh, against your tailback coming out and your tight end coming out. So you try to run the high low there, read it that way as a quarterback. So you still have options. If you see cover three or cover two, you still have an opportunity as a quarterback to make a play, but Oregon 
had game planned it. They knew the way Cal wanted to run it against that 12 personnel set getting down close to the red zone. So they called it with that man coverage in mind and they get the perfect coverage for the play. Let's take a look at it from the end zone here real quick. So again, Herbert knows he's mass, max protect here. He knows that this is the matchup he wants to take advantage of. Good play action, right? Holds the linebackers inside, actually influences the safety a little bit too. Outside linebacker has eyes in the backfield even though he's playing uh, man coverage here. Watch Herbert. I want to show you this with his eyes. He gives good play action. This, this is a really nice job here too. Boom. Watch him tuck that ball. He shows it to defense, tucks that ball, and gets low. They call that getting cramps. And so what happens is defense loses track of you and looks to the back. Now, as soon as he comes back up, you see him snap his head around. Watch him snap the head. Snaps his head around, finds the safety. Boom. Locates that safety. Okay, safety in the middle of the field. So now he's got safety pinned. He knows where he's going to be. He knows he's got that scissors concept. Right there, he turns to look to make sure that that outside's going to be flat. He sees the man coverage. Now he hitches a couple times to stay on rhythm and just delivers an absolute strike. This is ideal for a quarterback in terms of timing, being on rhythm. Just through this last part real quick here. Great play action fake. Snap the head. Locate the safety. Middle is still closed. Post can't work. Find that open space to the outside. Stay on rhythm. And deliver a strike. And that's exactly how you do it. That's the scissors concept. And that's how you run the scissors concept to perfection. Justin Herbert's really good, obviously. Going to be a first round pick. Oregon has the opportunity to do that because they're so effective in the run game. Now, that was executed flawlessly. I'm going to show you some plays coming up that aren't so flawless and what quarterbacks have to do to adjust. For coaches, for players, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm going to go through a whole slew of plays. Uh, we've got access to some really good film, and so we'll break down a whole bunch of different looks from the air raid with Mike Leach to uh, pounding the ball running game with Stanford. We'll take a look at a bunch of different stuff. We'll kind of bring it across to you. I wish when I was young, I had the opportunity to learn from somebody who understood the game. And so that's why now it's great here on YouTube. I can give back to the, all the players that are out there, the young coaches. I've coached in high school. Uh, I will be coaching coming up. I coach quarterbacks. And so I love bringing that knowledge to younger players, help them excel in the game, help them really be good. And so make sure you subscribe, hit the bell when you do so that you get notified whenever anything comes up. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this. Please give me a comment. Ask me any questions about this play, about other plays. Whatever you want to know about in football, ask me a question, and maybe I'll make a video to answer your question at some point. So I'd love to talk to you about the game of football, bring the game to you. Remember, you can always go to EliteAthletesTV.com, and you can get training at the quarterback position or linebacker position or any of our other sports. We have training there on the site, full programs, full drills, skills, teaching that you can learn from. But until then, I appreciate you watching. Those of you that made it all the way through, you're awesome. Give me a thumbs up. I look forward to talking to you guys next time. Elite Athletes TV quarterback training, happy to bring it to you.